hormones. Many people are familiar with hormones and how they play a role in one's fertility and on a reproductive system. Recently, I highlighted another fact that might have shocked people a bit about these chemical messengers, specifically their impact on our mood. See, hormones can really impact our emotions as well as they have an effect on our whole body, including our brain. Hormones can cause these changes in our mood and our brain because these molecules actually interact with our own brain signals, our neurotransmitters, and they also affect our mental processing patterns. There's even receptors for estrogen and progesterone in our brain and throughout our whole body. So this means when there's life transitions for females, biological women, who go through fluctuating times of their hormones, whether that's the start of their menstrual cycle or their monthly cycle in which hormones fluctuate, or even towards the cessation of their menstrual cycle that occurs in perimenopause and menopause, it can cause a lot of physical, emotional, and social behavioral changes. And these biological effects include alterations to the brain. Now, previously, if you want to look at a video that I released about hormones and mood, and then another video I released on when hormones are imbalanced, they can cause radical changes in mood, including irritability and even rage. The link to that video, as well as the other resources and references I'm going to discuss in this video will be in the video description. I'm Dr. Sarah, and today I want to discuss with you three ways that menopause can change the brain, specifically the connection between hormones and cognition. I also want to discuss with you how it can support women during these transitions using a naturopathic, functional, and root cause medicine approach. Even if you're not a biological woman, watching this video and also reading more about it can help you understand how hormones affect the brain. Okay, so let's get started. I'm excited to share with you today three ways that menopause affects the brain. So the first way that menopause can impact the brain is because of this hormonal influence on neurotransmitter production that I alluded to at the beginning of the video. So sex hormones influence these brain neurotransmitters, including our main ones of serotonin, GABA, glutamate, and dopamine. Some of the most direct relationships are related to estrogen affecting the neurotransmitter of serotonin, our endorphins, which are feel-good chemicals, and our stress neurotransmitters, specifically how these stress neurotransmitters are detoxified from our body. There's also kind of a complex relationship between estrogen, prolactin, and dopamine. And then there's progesterone, which also plays a role in mood and brain health. And it has been shown to influence serotonin as well. And it may even have neuroprotective effects on the brain. This is still preliminary though. Now, a downstream progesterone metabolite, alloprognagnolone, has been said to modulate GABA receptors, which is the gamma aminobutyric acid receptors in the brain. And this can result in anti-anxiety and antidepressant effects. In fact, some women might be familiar with GABA or pro having progesterone be prescribed to them to impact GABA if they're having hormonal issues and problems with sleep or anxiety. Some doctors actually give women oral progesterone for this reason. So the first way that menopause affects the brain is this hormonal influence on these neurotransmitters. We talk specifically about estrogen and progesterone. Now, the second way is many women in menopause experience a temporary decrease in memory and cognition. And this is not uncommon. And it's usually due to the fact that estrogen has those specific receptors in the brain. And they are found in the limbic region which controls for mood, emotion, and memory. But again, the good news here is that it's not often permanent. And if we balance estrogen low levels, it has been found to modulate cognitive function better. And when I talk about balancing hormones, I'm not just talking about giving hormones exogenally or 
through uh, hormone replacement therapy, for example. I'm also talking about some of the other ways that we can balance hormones, which I'll get to a little bit later. So we have these memory and cognition changes. We have the hormone influence on neurotransmitters. And the third way is there's an actual change in brain structure. So there's a relationship between the menopause transition and locations in the brain, which influence negative emotional processing that are affected by this transition. And this and other brain changes have been found to occur in menopause. Now, a recent study used several types of brain imaging, specifically a magnetic resonance imaging, an MRI, a magnetic resonance spectroscopy, and a position emission tomography, a PET, a PET scan, to scan the brains of 161 women between the ages of 40 and 65. And these women were in three groups. Some were menopausal, one year without uh, menstruation. Some were transitioning to menopause, which were perimenopause. And the third group was postmenopausal. So they had long been past menopause. And what the results concluded is that the gray matter volume was lower in a certain region in the brain, the inferior temporal gyrus. And this is associated with high level visual perception. Glucose was lower in the temporal lobes. Now, remember, the brain is fueled by sugar, so there is lower available energy in this temporal region, which is involved in memory and perception. White matter volume was declined in multiple regions throughout the brain. So we're talking about white matter here, which is kind of the connecting part of the neurons, right? Um, and the gray matter is kind of the neuron cell bodies. So those were declined. And then there were deposits of amyloid beta, which is an Alzheimer's related associated protein that were higher in women who carried this variant in a specific gene, the ApoE gene. So this kind of highlighted a connection between menopause and a higher Alzheimer's risk for women. But what is the most interesting thing, so do not despair, is that these changes were compensated by many women by increasing cerebral blood flow and energy production to these areas that were most affected. And the researchers analyzed the data and also said that it suggested that some of the declines that occurred were definitely only temporarily and uh, were reversed in menopause or years afterwards. So that's cool. But what do we do in the meantime when women are experiencing this and how can we maybe prevent or preserve some of this cognitive imbalances or changes in the brain and also balance out those hormones so that maybe women don't have to struggle with mood effects as well as some of the physical symptoms. Now, I wrote an article on Rupa Health, which is based on this information I'm giving you. And I discuss several functional medicine labs that a doctor may want to consider along with conventional labs to help assess if a woman needs additional support for cognition through their menopausal years or just maybe if they're having issues with hormones. So obvious, the first obvious lab would be a hormonal panel, right? And many practitioners choose to run a blood, a saliva, and a urinary panel, which measures hormone metabolites. So we're actually looking at how hormones are metabolized into your body and then correlating that with levels in the blood as well as uh, levels in the saliva. If you can get all three, that's great. It's like a hat trick. It's wonderful to have all that, but at least having a baseline measure and comparison, these alterations and fluctuations can definitely be helpful. Some doctors choose to run a neurotransmitter test. There's caveats to that test, of course, but also just having, again, a baseline level and a comparison and looking at the symptoms can be helpful for, for practitioners and for clients and patients. And then a comprehensive stool test. This is because our gut microbiome is really correlated to our brain health. And I did a whole video on that as well, which again, you can find on my YouTube channel or in the video description. When you click on the article, there'll be links to all of these videos. But there is also a gut-brain connection and a gut-brain estrogen connection. There are specific microbacteria that are in our gut that help us process estrogen. 
And if these bacteria get imbalanced, or maybe if they're producing inflammatory mediators, our estrogen levels can get a little bit wacky. And again, because estrogen affects our neurotransmitters and affects the brain, this can contribute to mood and brain changes as well. So those are some labs, the hormonal, the neurotransmitter, and the comprehensive stool test, which is looking at gut health to assess how that impacts our estrogen detoxification, as well as the impact of estrogen on the brain. What can a woman do now with this information to maintain brain health? Well, first thing I will always suggest for any women going through any hormonal issues is lifestyle changes, which sometimes can be the hardest things, right? But if we're doing that from a nurturing, loving place and looking at why somebody may be blocked from participating in lifestyle shifts, we can go very far and um, also create a lot of change just from some simple basic things. So these lifestyle changes are things such as movement. Various exercises have been shown to boost brain health to build up certain neurons in the brain. Specifically, we think of BDNF or brain-derived neurotrophic factor. They've also been shown to enhance cognition and thinking skills and various different measurements of brain processing. There's different nutrients that our brain needs. Specifically, there's been correlations between people that eat healthy omega fatty acids and their brain health as well as cognition and mood. And we can think about brain stimulating uh, activities, just like your body, your brain needs a workout with different things that challenge it. And also social support is a brain stimulating activity. So we need those hormone, we need those hormones that are boosted like oxytocin and even, um, you know, decreasing the stress hormones, which will help balance out our uh, reproductive hormones when we are in loving, healthy relationships and in connection. Sleep will definitely help the brain, right? Because every night we flush out brain toxins by sleeping. And it's actually been shown to remove some of these amyloid plaque buildups if we're getting good quality sleep. And then of course there's stress reduction and I kind of already alluded to why that's important for hormonal health. There's different essential oils, which are one of my favorites, all-time mind, body, mood support. They also can modulate hormones. Now we think of lavender because of its impact on stress, but it also has been shown to impact brain changes as well as in, well, in rodent studies impacting different neurotransmitters. Clary Sage is a small trial that shows that it can impact serotonin as well as estrogen. Geronian and Rose also have a small human trial, which also shows that it may impact estrogen levels. And same thing for Neurali or bitter orange. And finally, there's rosemary essential oil, which is well known for its 1,8-cenol content, which has been studied in various in vitro, in vivo, and even in correlational human trials on how it impacts brain health. Specific herbs we can use. Some of my favorites for helping brain function are ashwagandha, which is a herb that we can also think of that modulates stress as well as builds and boosts brain function. There's ginkgo biloba, which can help with that brain circulatory circulation. Uh, that's been shown in human trials to be helpful. Lion's mane is a, is a mushroom actually, which has been shown in mechanistic trials to boost some brain derived neurotrophic factor and also have some other neuron promoting brain benefits. And then turmeric, which has been studied in trials for things such as depression, as well as decreasing inflammation, which impacts brain health. Uh, we also think of other herbs if a woman's experiencing mood shifts. I love St. John's wort if there's issues as far as a low mood. Uh, Periary marifica is one of the herbs that I've recently discovered and used with clients with good results, especially if their estrogen levels are lowering. There is a caveat and warning. That herb actually does shift estrogen levels and even its impact on the uterine and endometrial lining. So you do want to follow that herb. It is pretty powerful. I have seen this um, with specific clients that uh, that uh, endometrium thickness has been altered by this herb. And then finally, there's hormone replacement therapy. 
right? And this is either bioidentical or through a prescription medicine, which will look at your levels of hormones and actually give you those hormones and replace them in your body. And because of the impact of these hormones on the brain, it can potentially help the brain. I would caveat first to saying, make sure all these other things are dialed in first, because the last thing you want to do is be pumping in hormones and your lifestyles aren't tuned in, you're not getting enough sleep, maybe you're not doing anything for stress reduction, you're not modulating uh, brain health support with specific nutrients or even herbs, and you just keep playing hormonal roulette in, in whack-a-mole trying to get the right levels because everything you're doing in your lifestyle and other things are throwing them off. So it's best to get that dialed in first. Okay, so we looked at three ways that menopause can impact the brain, and we can correlate this to how hormones and specifically changes in estrogen and progesterone can influence neurotransmitter patterns, which impact mood, how it can alter our memory as well as cognition, and how it can actually create structural changes in the brain based on the role of these receptor sites in the brain for these hormones. And then we looked at some labs that we can run, such as hormone levels, such as neurotransmitter tests and comprehensive stool analysis because of those little microbiome, microbiota in our gut that actually helps us detoxify estrogen. Then we looked at lifestyle, aromatherapy, herbs, and hormone replacement that could potentially help keep cognition in a good spot and a brain health for women who are transitioning from either perimenopause to menopause or are in menopause, or maybe just are experiencing hormonal fluctuations through their cycle. So as you can see, there are many ways that we can decrease the effects that can potentially be negative on the brain when hormones are going up and down and varying to such a degree, but our body has cool compensatory mechanisms to make sure that our brain stays healthy and strong, and we can support that by using naturopathic functional and root cause medicine, as well as lifestyle shifts to keep our brain as well as our mood more balanced and make our lives and the people around us a little bit more happier. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I would love to hear your thoughts about this whole brain hormone connection and what your experience has been. And even if you have any tricks or tools that maybe you've experienced or know people have experienced. And I want to thank you for taking the time to learn more about integrative naturopathic and functional medicine and for your interest in this topic. And I would love for you to check out some of the free resources that I offer on my resource page, as well as some of the courses that I do teach in mind, body, and naturopathic and functional medicine. I do have specific focus on hormones and mental health, but I do also look at the whole person and tend to address various different wellness issues with a lot of my clients, okay? So feel free again to comment and I will personally comment back. And if you could like this video and share it, I would appreciate it so that I can keep taking the time to make these videos for you and pop up and say hi every week. Have a great rest of your day or night whenever you're watching this, and I hope to be back to talk with you again real soon.